Hey everyone, Crisis here. As a lifelong Zelda fan and having just beaten Tears of the Kingdom myself, I think the time is right to break down the attack power, durability, combat speed, and various skills and abilities of the latest incarnation of the goddess's chosen hero. That being Link from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. However, technically, this hero actually does make a third appearance in the form of Age of Calamity, a Nintendo overseen and written spinoff featuring Breath of the Wild's cast in a separate timeline branching off from around the events of the Great Calamity, with Zelda team proper working closely on every aspect of Age of Calamity. Unlike the previous Hyrule Warriors games, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity was developed by working closely with the Zelda team in every step of the process, including gameplay direction, graphics, world, and all dialogue. And with the actual appearances of the modern day champions from the Breath of the Wild, time traveling to this new timeline, actually remembering Link's aiding them throughout the events of that game, going back to the main timeline prior to Tears of the Kingdom, stating the Age of Calamity Link has the same strength as the one from Breath of the Wild, it's safe to use the feats and scaling from that game to inform what the hero of the wild from Tears of the Kingdom is truly capable of. In addition to that, I have made a couple of videos prior going over some of the more foundational facets of the series, at least from a power scaling perspective, so check those out if you're curious or want a deeper understanding of that aspect of the series. With that out of the way, let's begin by looking at the attack power of the hero of the wild. Of course, being the latest in line of some of gaming's greatest heroes, this version of Link boasts a litany of amazing feats of strength and power. For starters, working our way up, bystanders refer to the dragon Farosh as having split the once single mountain into the two dueling peaks, taking this at face value based on the peak's recorded in-game height of 437 meters, accounting for both its radius as well as the density of rock, this feat would yield around 206 trillion million joules or energy equal to that of nearly 50 kilotons of TNT. Link can not only combat and defeat malice constructs capable of possessing a similar dragon in the form of Nadra, but he can also stagger the dragon and knock a scale off of each beast as to offer them to Hylia in return for new shrines to conquer. Similarly, it was implied in creating a champion which is pretty much the official Breath of the Wild guidebook that some force burrowed the hole seen in the Hebrew mountain during the prior fight against the Great Calamity 10,000 years ago. Likely a divine beast laser, given the perfect circumference of the crater lining up well with the mech's blasts. Not only is it stated in the Explorer's Guide that the champions of Hyrule, warriors that Link is capable of combating in a 1v4 before getting the Master Sword, and as well defeating the blights that took said champions' lives, but the guide also says these heroes are equally as impressive as the divine beasts they pilot. Not to mention that Calamity Ganon would go on to survive four simultaneous mountain-carving beast beams before being defeated by Link, but I'll cover that more later on. This all is to say that Link should be able to endure and output forces around two megatons of TNT with his attacks. But let's ignore the dragon gods and massive mechas and take a look at these goobers. As electric whiz robes in particular wielding rods containing the electricity of the Hyrule Hills can straight up casually cause the entire sky above Hyrule to darken, manifesting clouds and thunderstorms from thin air. While this might not sound as impressive as splitting apart or carving holes into mountains, clouds are actually massive and very dense in their own right, and to generate them as fast as these fairly standard enemies are able to do would require around 29 sextillion joules or 7 teratons of TNT. That's a 7 with 12 zeros after it. Slinging around this much energy is comparable to what it would take to completely destroy entire countries, and not only can Link beat them in game, but so do the champions as a part of scripted encounters throughout Age of Calamity. Again, Link can fight those guys in a 1v4 and hang in there. 
without even having the Master Sword. But naturally, when talking about strong foes that Link has gone up against, none embodies such a manner of villain more than Ganon. Creating a champion specifies the Blood Moon we see sporadically in the skies above Hyrule is caused by the leaking power of the Calamity Ganon which Zelda is suppressing. So in an incomplete state, not even the Ganondorf's body below the castle. This incarnation of hate is able to drag the moon across the night sky in just mere seconds in game. However, as an example, one minute in the game's engine isn't exactly one real minute on the game's clock. The day-night cycle is naturally sped up compared to real time. One second in the game when walking around equals about one minute of the game's clock. Accounting for that, to move an object weighing 81 quintillion tons as far as he does in about five minutes based on the game's clock would require kinetic energy equaling 22.7 Yoda tons, 22 followed by 24 zeros, energy equal to what it would take to destroy a large planet. While many may argue that Link battled the Calamity with the Master Sword in hand, which many consider to be Ganon's kryptonite, I'm not sure if it's actually that simple. Even across the timeline, Ganon is still a threat to the hero even with the Blade of Evil's Bane in hand. I'd argue it's either that the sword itself is simply so powerful and boasts a relative level of holy magic as Ganon's dark magic and would therefore be able to combat him in that sense, or perhaps it works sort of like magic tends to affect the Man of Steel, bypassing his otherwise invulnerability, harming him like it would anyone else, to keep up the Superman analogies. In fact, Tears of the Kingdom specifies that Ganondorf is simply vulnerable to it, only meaning he can be harmed by it, not necessarily an outright weakness like Kryptonite. If the Master Sword simply rendered Ganon a whimpering pigman, then sure, I'd agree that Link would not scale in any way, but that's never how it goes. Ganon's even able to survive Link's holy onslaught long enough to manifest a different form. The Master Sword doesn't just one-shot him. Oddly enough, it's better proof of Link and his weapon outright rivaling this planet-busting power than if the hero just bullied Ganon via the Master Sword. Even still, the Hero of the Wild then goes on to boast the Bow of Light, which is stated to have unparalleled power pretty much placing it above the likes of the Blood Moon and the monster who created it, blatantly so in the sense of actual potency. While Tears of the Kingdom doesn't offer us much in the way of feats and scaling, as in there's not really any display in that game that would yield much, if any, of a higher calculation per se, compared to the Blood Moon. The Demon King does cover the world in gloom, which, assuming it's anywhere near as dense as a cloud, this will yield up to around 5 teratons, or enough energy to level a small country. Still less than moving the Blood Moon in Breath of the Wild, though. Besides that, and seeing as things like this completely new Ganondorf that we've never seen before, and new power-up MacGuffins in the form of the Tears, don't really have any connection or any real way to scale to the rest of the series, there are only a few points worth making. For one, Ganondorf in this game with his Tear of Time is far stronger than Calamity Ganon. The Master Sword had been rejuvenated after it was implied to become worn down after Breath of the Wild. And with Link's stats maxed out at the start of the game, it's likely that the blade is at the level it was after the Trial of the Sword, meaning it's at least the strongest it's been while the Hero of the Wild has ever wielded it, with Ganondorf just cracking it and sending Link near death. So the same planet-busting iteration of Ganon from the game prior would likely get one shot by the suppressed, mummified version of Ganondorf. In this game as well, we can actually find the fierce deity's armor and weapons during quests outright. Not just the likely non-canon amiibo drops. This armor is blatantly name-dropped in canon dialogue, and Link can find it and wear it. While this probably isn't the same armor as seen in Majora's Mask, as we can also find this armor and sword in pieces, rather than just finding the mask and acquiring it all at once, as it was seen in Majora's Mask, meaning it's probably a fake or replica. However, if we do assume this armor and blade has at least 
comparable power to the Majora's Mask version, then the Hero of the Wild would have power greater than those of beings who can warp entire universes, as the demon Majora was able to alter the entire time space of Termina, a universe parallel to Hyrule, and the fierce deity canonically defeated Majora, likely with little difficulty. Throughout Tears of the Kingdom, the hero manages to build himself back up with the sacred light of Zonai shrines, and as well receives the healed Master Sword, suffused with holy power of Zelda in her dragon form, for at the very least, multiple centuries. While this version of the princess is rather novice, and as well lacks her Triforce born power from the ending of the last game, I think it's safe to say that the power of her tear, as well as her awakening as a sage and her dragon power on top of that, places her holy magic at the level of her original ancestor. Zelda from Skyward Sword was Hylia reincarnated, possessing her power with her later descendants as well boasting this light force. Link in this game would have that very strength and then some behind every swing of his sword. This is as well consistent with descriptions of the sages across time possessing Hylia's power in the words of the Zelda Encyclopedia, with the ancient sages and the likely stronger new sages all being tossed aside by Ganondorf. Whereas Link was successful against his onslaught, also proving how much stronger he'd become, seeing as his maxed out version from the start of the game was pretty much fodderized by a weaker, mummified, dehydrated version of Ganon. In Skyward Sword, Hylia was described as able to put up a fierce fight against Demise, with her dying by the end of their fight and Demise being sealed away. It's safe to say that they each boast at least comparable levels of power here, as they each received similar fates after battling one another. Hylia did survive this fight long enough to essentially defeat or banish Demise after all. Even if she's weaker, it's not by much really. Demise being someone who could conjure and control a hyperspace, as stated in the encyclopedia, with a hyperspace being described as a realm having more than just the three contemporary dimensions, such as length, width, and depth. This fourth dimensional level of power would be infinitely greater than that of the entire universe itself, further detailed in my prior video on the Hero of Time. Watch that video if you want to learn more, but essentially, you could stack up as many universes just ad infinitum, and it would still not come close to being fourth dimensional, and that's the level of power that Hylia and Demise could wield, with Link then using this hyperspace level Master Sword to 1v1 the strongest Ganon that at least this iteration of Link has ever faced, pushing him to his limit and forcing him into an act of desperation, becoming a demon dragon, where the hero manages to damage his weak points and finally break his tier, destroying the Demon King. The Hero of the Wild's speed is as well legendary, with the knight being able to dodge and even deflect the beams fired from guardians, with said projectiles being stated to be lasers multiple times within Breath of the Wild itself. We have multiple examples of this feat across this hero's appearances, with the instance of Link saving Zelda from the mech's laser being described in Daruk's journal in Breath of the Wild and as well on screen in Age of Calamity. Lasers, of course, travel at the speed of light, that being over 299 million meters per second, or 670 million miles per hour. Link battles not only many guardians at once to defend Zelda, but also faces other enemies boasting similar armaments, such as that of Calamity Ganon, the former Gerudo King's makeshift body composed of similar cobbled together Sheikah tech. It's been as well observed that the mechanic of the Fury Rush has some implications in the actual canon lore itself, with characters describing Link's impressive swiftness, meaning it's possible to grant Link the feat wherein lightning blasts appear dismally slow from his point of view if flurry rushed. The speed of lightning is around Mach 1300, and considering just how sluggish it appears to be moving here, it would mean that Link would be able to perceive objects moving at 38 times the speed of light at a low end. Regarding this hero's powers, the Sheikah Slate as of Breath of the Wild 
provides him a fairly robust arsenal. He can conjure remote detonated explosives, manipulate metal objects via magnesis, create ice blocks as either shields or platforms, and even freeze objects and enemies, allowing him to rack up combos while they're stopped in time. Link as well inherits the champion's powers, those being Ravali's Gale, creating a gust of wind propelling him upward, Urbosa's Fury to generate lightning strikes in the surrounding area, Daruk's Protection to shield him from attacks, and Mipha's Grace to heal all of his wounds and completely rejuvenate him from near death. These abilities and their potency should all at least scale to the Divine Beasts, considering the Blights were able to infiltrate and seize them all, with the champions putting up a pitched fight against Phantom Ganons based on Age of Calamity. Although these powers should probably just all scale to Link at the end of Breath of the Wild, at least when he's using them. A shield wouldn't be much of a shield if it was weaker than you were, right? In Tears of the Kingdom, not only does Link ditch all of his previously mentioned gear for a whole new set of Sage granted powers, but he as well tosses his Sheikah Slate in the garbage in exchange for the Pura Pad. His new abilities include Recall, which sends otherwise stagnant slash inanimate objects backwards through their course of time, Granted, it's never shown working on enemies or their weapons, like stasis, even in cutscenes, so it probably can't do that exactly. He can combine aspects of his arsenal, making already powerful weapons even stronger, or adding elemental buffs to his sword, shield, or arrows. I actually combined the Fierce Deity Sword with the Master Sword via this way, and uh, that's how I beat the final boss, so there's a good tip. And if that's canonically possible, then that's pretty busted. He as well has Ultra Hand to pick up and manipulate certain objects, and Ascend, which lets him fly upward through solid matter. In addition to this, he can as well call on avatars boasting the powers of the new Sages, such as Riju's Control over Lightning, Chulin's Wind, Sidon's Water, and Unobo's Fire, as well as the Sage of Spirits Zonai Battle Mech. Besides that, Link has various armor and weapons that provide some additional skills, such as armor that resists attacks such as those from Guardians, gear that amplifies his already legendary strength, a helmet and suit which absorbs or deflects lightning strikes, stealth armor, a suit which enhances his swimming abilities, a gear resistant to lava levels of heat, and others resistant to extreme cold. He as well possesses swords and arrows yielding elemental effects, such as fire, ice, and electricity, in addition to bomb arrows and ancient arrows, which are stated to instantly send its target to oblivion. However, in the Japanese description of the item, it only says it destroys objects using ancient energy. Many people, based on the English translation, argue these arrows possess an ability called Existence Erasure, which pretty much just means that it attacks and destroys matter at an extremely fundamental level. This would possibly mean it could obliterate pretty much anything unless it's shown to be expressingly resistant to having their existence erased. Again, however, the Japanese translation pretty much just says they're big strong and not much more than that. And of course, the Master Sword, would grant Link beams of energy when at full health, and possibly at least some measure of other abilities the Blade has shown across the other games and timelines. While it does act differently and seems to gift the various heroes with different abilities depending on the title, it pretty much weakens or deflects dark magic across the board. It gave the Hero of Twilight the ability to resist curses derived from the Triforce of Power wielding Ganondorf, it could shatter magic barriers in the hands of the Hero of Legend, it can seal and break down the consciousness of evil beings within the blade itself, as seen against Demise, deflect magical attacks, turn enemies to stone, and so on. I say the Hero of the Wild could only possibly boast these powers via the sword, as many qualities of the Blade of Evil's Bane either manifest differently or exclusively to the other hero's incarnations, which is likely evocative of their varying levels of magic or other sources of power, as the Master Sword exists as an extension of the hero and is more or less powered by him as much as he is it. As essentially the premier warrior of his age, called the most accomplished swordsman in all of Hyrule, this version of Link gives us plenty to go off of, 
as far as evaluating his prowess as a fighter. For starters, as a child, likely around 12 or 13 years old, he was said to have beaten all of Hyrule's best knights, as well as a Lionel. Based on Age of Calamity, beating these legendary monsters is proof of one's mastery with a blade. Creating a champion then details the hero's stature among the other champions of Hyrule, all exceptionally skilled warriors representing the peace of their respective clans. Link can even fight off hollow clones of each of the champions at the same time. Rivali even notes that these copies possess these same skills and abilities as the actual champions, meaning Link can contend with the Rudo's greatest bowman, the Gerudo's greatest blade wielder, the strongest among the Goron, and the best among the Zora, all at once and before even getting the Master Sword, like I keep feeling like I have to reiterate. He can as well wield weapons which can only be held by the most talented of the Gerudo. He can defeat elite sword masters of the Yiga clan, with these people's abilities tracing back to their Sheikah roots. He as well constantly trains under Hyrule's best masters, developing high-level skills in spear and bow combat in tandem to his sword prowess. As well as as throughout Tears of the Kingdom, he is constantly referred to as a master of all forms of combat, whether it be bow, sword, shield, etc. by the Zonai. So when everything is said and done, this version of Link boasts planetary and up to fourth dimensional levels of attack power, massively faster than light combat and reaction speeds, master level skills as a fighter, and a gargantuan array of magic and powerful weapons, making him a threat on nearly any battlefield. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks so much for watching. Check out my couple of other videos on Zelda, or just check out my channel in general, as I have plenty of other videos power scaling other video game or comic book or movie characters. I think there's something here for anyone, so please enjoy, and of course, thanks for watching.